Yo, Mr. Flicks, can I watch this movie? Oh, jeez, I'm sorry, bro, but you were born in the UK, so you can't watch that. Hey, buddy, I won't ask you again. Let him watch his movie. Oh, well, I guess I've got no choice, if you say so. Ladies and gentlemen, that right there is the greatest bodyguard an internet surfer could ever ask for. That is the surf shark. Trying to just enjoy those little guilty pleasures of yours in peace, but then... <gasps> spies! Well, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Remember that time years ago when I got hacked by crypto scammers? Well, that's a lot less likely now, because the surf shark's gonna eat them. That, that, that's how that works. Now, the way it actually works is it's a VPN service. Simply choose the destination you'd like to browse from, and then you're no longer Mr. Important from Iowa, you're just any guy in Brazil. And that's all anybody needs to know. Try out Surfshark 1, an all-in-one suite of total online protection. They got all those preventatives such as the VPN, but on top of that, they got real-time antivirus, security alerts, and more. And it's pretty freaking sweet if you ask me. Don't just be protected, be impenetrable. But Surfshark and I have cooked up something extra special just for you, dear viewer. With my special bespoke discount code PUP, that's spelled P-U-P, you can get three extra months completely free. There is no risk in trying Surfshark. They even offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Hit the link in the description below and claim those extra free three months. Hey, what's up? I'm Channel Pup, the mascot for the level-headed fanboy. And the reason thing that all the Sonic fans are talking about are the rumors of a Sonic Heroes remake in the works. The source? Uh, Jesus, I guess. Yeah, like, who is actually saying this is a thing? Not to mention the rumors have changed from it being in the works to Sega are considering it. We have an unreliable narrator, methinks. But reputable leaker Zippo has commented on the validity of the leaks, so maybe? I mean, we have seen that Sega are a bit more interested in remasters lately with Sonic Colors Ultimate and the upcoming Sonic X Shadow Generations. However, the rumor has it that Sonic Heroes is getting a fully from the ground up remake in Unreal Engine 5. And it's got me thinking all about the Sonic games that I would most like to see remade. So I've decided to do what every basic bitch YouTuber would do and make a top 10 ranking of the Sonic games I would most like to see remade. Now, I, I do want to add the stipulation. I am strictly referring to remakes here, not remasters. These are not just games that I think, you know, they could take the existing game and give it a little bit of graphical polish. These are games that I genuinely think would benefit it from a top to bottom remake. So starting with number 10 is one that a lot of people would probably say is fairly obvious, but Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. These are great games that despite a couple of quirks that do show their age, they have stood the test of time. Some great recreations of the Sonic Adventure games would be a great way of Sega saying, no, Sonic didn't have a rough transition to 3D. In fact, we got it right the first time. These are the games that wrote the playbook for the 3D Sonic, delivering that blockbuster twist on the 3D platformer action genre that only Sonic could truly pull off. At the end of the day, the Sonic Adventure games are two of the most influential Sonic games of all time, referenced in a lot of recent releases, but they also ushered in some pretty major staples of the Sonic franchise, such as Crush 40. Like, I mean, for Pete's sake, the Sonic Symphony, like any other Sonic concert, closes out with Live and Learn. It is probably one of the most iconic tracks in the entire franchise. By making the adventure games readily available and accessible to new audiences, they could see where all that started. They could get to experience City Escape in the context of the original story, but with all of the polish of a modern AAA title. These games still matter, and I would say they matter just as much as the classic trilogy, so they deserve to be out there for the world to see. However, obviously, I mean, like, look at them. Like, they're, they're not really gonna fly today with new audiences. 
bringing these experiences to life with high fidelity visuals just seems like a no-brainer to me. I will say this though, they would need to step up their game in the animation department, and I don't just mean make the animations better than Sonic Adventure. Here's the thing, the goofy animation quirks in the Sonic Adventure games are part of the charm. And Sega would be in kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario in that regard. If they got rid of the ridiculous facial expressions, you'd lose a lot of the charm. But if you didn't get rid of the goofy facial expressions, it would also kind of be like, why would you not fix that up? So what I'm getting at here is you couldn't just replace it with like, say, Frontiers tier animation. You would need to bring in the best animation the series has ever seen. Take what was ironically good and make it genuinely really good. Not just fit for purpose, not just acceptable, like really, really good. Marza Animation Planet quality, good. Big exaggerated facial expressions and movements that don't just look stupid, they actually work really well. If they only remade one of the Sonic Adventure games, while two is my favorite, I think one is the one to go for. Because it probably is one of the more definitive 3D Sonic experiences, just because of how kind of open-ended the game feels. No, it's not open zone, but exploring places like Station Square, the Mystic Ruins, the Egg Carrier, I think that's all stuff that would translate wonderfully to a contemporary remake. It's a very obvious pick, but uh, I can see why. In at number 9 is Sonic the Hedgehog, 2006. I think Sonic 06's reputation is pretty overblown, but at the same time, that is what it is. It's a game that brought a stigma that the franchise has never quite managed to shake off. However, were this game given a second chance, there is a lot of potential that could be realized, and Sega would have a chance to rewrite the darkest part of Sonic's history, as far as general consensus goes. Imagine the conversation surrounding Sonic when people can't even rag on Sonic 06 anymore without admitting that the remake was absolutely fire. If Sega could make Sonic 06 work, it would send a message to the gaming world and the gaming press that Sonic is not to be trifled with. We know that this guy can get up when he gets pushed down. They did bounce back from Sonic 06 more or less, but it has always been that sticking point. If they were to get rid of that sticking point and make the game amazing, just imagine what this franchise would look like to outsiders and gaming journalists now. And the best part is, this remake already exists. Brought to us by fan developer Chaos X, who has recreated the game from the ground up in Unity. And it is amazing. All of the problems with the original Sonic 06 have been smoothed out now, while retaining the original vision for the game. The level design is still the same. The control scheme still achieves roundabout what the original Sonic 06 seek to achieve. It's an honest grassroots recreation, except it just functions better and feels better. Sega would barely have to even do anything here. Just buy the game off of Chaos X. Now, Chaos X has allegedly stated that they wouldn't accept money for this, nor would they want to work for Sega. Everybody has a price. Sega, come on, make Chaos X a millionaire, because that remake has completely realized the potential even prettying the whole thing up with next-gen graphical capabilities. This looks like a genuine triple-A Sonic game, which is something we haven't seen in like a decade. It looks amazing. Now, there are going to be people asking what's to be done about the story, though. Princess Elise and all that is very infamous. I say just get it out there unapologetically. Leave the cutscenes as they are, leave the story as it is. There's a lot of Sonic story beats that were subject to mockery at the time as trying to be something they're not, trying too hard, like Maria Robotnik's death. It's now something people are pining to see in Sonic Movie 3. We don't want to see Sonic shy away from the sillier moments in Sonic history. I want them to be honest about that. Because at the end of the day, I think people would have accepted Sonic 06's story a lot more were the game surrounded by said story much more polished and much more enjoyable. After all, we've seen some really good Sonic games with worse stories than what Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 has, and they've been successful enough. Come on, Sega. Be ballsy here, come on. In at number eight, you guys are all going to seriously double take at this, but hey, I'll explain. Sonic Frontiers. I know, you're probably thinking, what the hell are you talking about, pup? That game just released super recently, and you even said that it's one of your favorite Sonic games of all time, which it is. 
But the thing is, it can be better. Like, a lot better. I love the bones of this thing. I love everything it does, everything it proposes. Now give me a congruent version of it. Give me the definitive version of Sonic Frontiers. Give me that story about Sonic avenging the ancients going up against the end, but rather than the story proposing character development through dialogue, have them actually do it. Have them go all the way. Give me the open zone graveyards, but rather than proposing the idea of the open zone through a bunch of sandboxes with completely disconnected platforming sections, give me actual congruent places to play around in. Give me the game that the actual Sonic Frontiers was a beta test for. Don't give me so many gameplay sliders. Give me a gameplay style that the world is actually built around. With the only adjustments being like maybe just the top speed just for accessibility's sake. Give me the cyberspace concept actualized. Rather than just reusing assets from Sonic Generations, make cyberspace its own digital world. Have proper Coco NPCs dotted about and let me actually interact with them. Show me the actual ruined worlds of the ancients. Show me where they shopped. Show me where they played. Let me actually experience those flashbacks rather than just seeing them. Rather than those flashbacks just occurring in cutscenes, let me run around the once alive world of the Starfall Islands and talk to NPCs of the ancients. Let me see the Titans under construction. And let me buy food from a Coco hot dog stand and either feed it to Sonic and gain EXP or feed it to one of the other characters and get their opinions on it, a la Sonic Unleashed. Because I want to know what Amy, Knuckles, and Tails think of the Ancients food. Sonic Frontiers was effectively a beta test with a game wrapped around it, with a story wrapped around it. Take it out of beta, let me see the game brought to life properly. It's never gonna happen. However, I just wanna see a Sonic Frontiers that looks and feels as good as the soundtrack sounds. In at number seven is Sonic R. So the Sega All-Stars racing games were a huge hit. Sumo Digital did an excellent job. However, is the future of Sonic racing games all just gonna be go-karts? Sonic R is kind of a cult classic. It's got that distinctive, crunchy Sega Saturn art style, the classic cast of characters all running around on foot, and some iconic music, and I say keep all that. Keep all of that intact. Keep that Sega Saturn aesthetic with the low poly classic characters. Keep the soundtrack by Richard Jake and TJ Davis. Maybe remix it a little and just expand upon the entire game. Make the controls feel really good. We know how to make Sonic control in a 3D space now. Just do it. Make the characters feel like they do it in Sonic Adventure. With the focus being purely on racing, you could even build a little in-universe explanation as to why the other characters can kind of run as fast as Sonic or give them other advantages. And as they go one further and just expand upon the game by adding modern characters and locations in that crunchy, low-poly classic art style. I know there's the mandate, no classic shadow, but grow up, it's a video game. They're meant to be fun. Who cares about lore? Fuck lore. If you can get Ben Riley Spider-Man suits into Spider-Man games, there's no reason why we shouldn't have a proper classic shadow, classic rouge, all in this low-poly classic Sega Saturn art style. It would be sick. You could also have online multiplayer. It's just insane to me that the concept of a Sonic Foot Racer hasn't really been revisited that much. Come on, Sega cowards. If you want to do a revisitation of the retro arcade era, this is a great way to go. We are out of nostalgia for the classic titles now. This, though, would definitely tickle some pickles. Ironically enough, though, in at number six is the classics. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, we're classicked out. I agree. I don't need to run through a 16-bit Green Hill Zone ever again. Let me elaborate on this. When I was a kid and I was playing Sonic 1 and 2 for the very first time back on the Sega Mega Drive before I even knew 3D games were a thing, I always kind of thought about what it would be like to traverse these worlds as Sonic the Hedgehog in 3D, moving forward instead of side to side. Sonic Adventure 2 kind of teased us with, yeah, but what if, you know? Like, it's my buddy Badnik Mechanic was saying over on the Sunset City episode he guest starred in, is that Sega have always kind of teased us with, what if we actually remade those games in 3D? And that was kind of what that Green Hill bonus stage in Sonic Adventure 2 was. It was like a proposition, and it was exciting. Then in Sonic Heroes, they kind of eluded to some of the classic stages, but, you know, they weren't going all the way. Then with Sonic Generations, we got 
three of them. And then from there, it's just been those same three levels getting revisited over and over again. It feels like Sega are constantly spinning the wheels for something bigger. And I think it's time to either shit or get off the pot. Make a fully 3D recreation of the classic Sonic games. Have them play similar to the adventure games. A similar overall control scheme, still playing as the classic Sonic cast. But let's retell those stories. Running through Green Hill Zone in the context of it being the Sonic 1 story is going to be so much more exciting than just bringing it back because uh, Sonic's past. Same goes for Chemical Plant, same goes for Sky Sanctuary. Imagine finally getting to run through a 3D Sky Sanctuary where we actually get to fight Mecha Sonic Mark II. This would be a way of really refreshing those classic games. And I'd go on further and say you could do it with kind of the structure of the open zone in Sonic Frontiers in some ways. You've got South Island, West Island, and Angel Island from those classic games as the open zones. And rather than those islands just kind of being one thing, you know, like one is themed after Green Hill, one is themed after Chemical Plant or whatever, have those islands actually feel kind of sizable. Have the scenery change. Have it so that you can run from one end of the island that looks like Green Hill Zone to another end of the island that looks a bit more like Labyrinth or Marble or something. And then as you progress through the story, more parts of those islands open up. And then you've got gates that take you to the conventional A to B Sonic style level. I guess the open zones wouldn't necessarily serve the same purpose as being the predominant aspect of the game. More just an open area to transition you through the story, to transition you from zone to zone. More like a hub world, I guess. But like just a very, very big one. I like just having the space to run around as Sonic and just play and hone my skills. Maybe these open worlds are where the special stage gates are hidden. Or you could have specific parts of the story take place here, or have a few little missions where you have to help out some flickies or something here. I don't think you need to do too much justification for having open worlds in Sonic games because it just gives you some space to play, where your conventional Sonic level is typically very cinematic. You wouldn't need to do too much mandatory stuff in those open worlds if we were cramming three Sonic games worth into one here. But imagine, okay, you've got your first open world, it's South Island, and you're running around the Green Hill Zone in an open area, some level gates open up. You now have three unique acts. You can run through them, do the act, and then suddenly you discover a marble area on the island that opens up to you after completing those acts, and so it goes. I would say just do the trilogy though, because I feel like Sonic CD is its very own kettle of fish. Maybe just suggest the passage of time between Sonic 1 and Sonic 2. Because the thing is, Sonic CD's levels are overall just kind of analogs for Sonic 1's levels, but the time travel element being put into 3D seems like A, a bit of a headache, and B, let's be realistic here, you're probably not going to fit all that into one game without the pacing suffering a little. So going straight shot, Sonic 1 all taking place on South Island, Sonic 2 all taking place on West Island, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles all taking place on Angel Island, play through those adventures, fully 3D with open spaces. You know what, I think you could even have Sega Hardlight do it. I think they'd do an absolutely bang up job. If you were to just do one, I guess the first one is once again the one to go for, but the thing with Sonic 1 is I, I still don't think the classics really hit their strides until 2. And then 3 was obviously even better. I like the idea of it being an all-in-one package. At the same time, like maybe they could stagger them. Maybe they could release like one every year or one every two years. Either way, look, if you want to keep bringing back classic levels, do it in the classic stories. Make them matter. In at number five is, yes, Sonic Heroes. Sonic Heroes was a lot of people's very first introduction to Sonic because it was the first third-party Sonic game, so it was going on all the different consoles as opposed to Sonic just being a Sega exclusive. This is a game that means a lot to a lot of people. It's helped by having this really party-like atmosphere that just nails the Sonic tone. It has a superb selection of levels that didn't feel done to death by that point, a truly iconic soundtrack, and it gives us a little taster of what all of the different Sonic characters have to offer. It's obvious why Sonic Heroes means as much as it does to its fans. It's also a game with a lot of problems, but the solutions to said problems are kind of in plain sight. Make Chaos Emerald Collection a little bit simpler. 
don't make every single team's story mandatory to unlock the final story, but have rewards for them anyways, be it unlockable skins or just things people would want to play around in. Three stories of more or less the same thing and then an additional story where you're running through linear A to B levels all about speed where you have to hunt for tiny objects, all while also collecting chaos emeralds through carrying keys to the finish line without ever getting hurt. Yeah, it's a bit much to ask for the player. Rain it in, you fuckers. Chaos Emerald Collection, just make it 50 rings by the end of the stage, get a big ring you can jump through. Simple. Or hide special stage gates in little nooks and crannies that are rewarded for exploration. And in the controls, revert them kind of back to what they were in Sonic Adventure, where they're not quite so slippery and the acceleration isn't quite so ridiculously high. And then to be honest, you kind of got it down. Maybe just get rid of the chaotic story altogether, or alternatively, make their levels bespoke. Give them like little arenas that are actually designed for retrieving those objects, rather than those A to B speedway levels. And make it so that maybe you just have to complete two campaigns to get the final story. Also, let us fight like a standard Metal Sonic in there as well. We only get one Metal Sonic boss fight and it's when he's in his Metal Overlord form and that's not what anyone actually likes about Metal Sonic. But if we can fight him in his base and Neo Metal forms as well, that would be sick. Maybe put that in the place of those robot gauntlets. Sonic Heroes has its heart in the right place and it's got all the right ideas, it's just unfortunately the execution kind of stinks. Let's get the execution right this time. Okay, so my number four pick is Sonic Rush and Sonic Rush Adventure. And a lot of these remakes have been very outlandish, very on a large scale. However, this one here, I'd be quite happy for them to just take the game and make it work on a single screen. Pretty up the visuals a little bit too, so they don't just look good for Nintendo DS games, they actually look good as 2D platformers. Because the Sonic Rush games are incredibly important, they are what ushered in the boost era of Sonic. And they're also fantastic games. I'd say the first Sonic Rush probably needs the most work done to it, because the level design is very dimps. Lots of bottomless pits, some traps that you just get a split second warning time before seeing them coming, and the boss fights kind of stink. So maybe replace some of those bottomless pits with spike beds, put a few warning telegraphing signs, rework those boss fights, and then yeah, you've got a winner with Sonic Rush. Sonic Rush is a really cool game with a really distinctive style of its own. Sonic Rush Adventure does the things like level design and boss fights a lot better than the first Sonic Rush did. You all need to admit that, guys. I know the first one is nostalgic for you guys, I know it's got style, but you gotta admit that Rush Adventure just has better level design and boss fights. I also really enjoy the vehicle segments and the RPG elements. The RPG elements you could expand upon with actual 3D hub worlds. And then maybe the vehicle sections could be made optional, I don't know. Just because I do understand that a lot of people didn't like those, even though I did. And of course, make the Emerald Collection just a bit more concise. For Rush Adventure, that is. I think Sonic Rush has Emerald Collection down. I think more important than anything else is just getting those games out there. They are stuck on the Nintendo DS family of consoles. And for one generation, the Sonic Rush games are to them what the classics are to us old people. And I also just think these games have streaks of brilliance. I mean, Sonic Rush Adventure is brilliant. Sonic Rush 1 has streaks of it. Could just use a little work done. I think these deserve a revisitation one way or another. In at number three is Sonic Forces. Because here's the thing, Sonic Forces had potential. A story where Dr. Robotnik has won and Sonic and his friends have to take the world back is an awesome premise. And the idea that you can join their squad as your own OC character is really, really solid. A lot of that potential was realized in the fan mod Sonic Forces Overclocked, which I highly recommend. But as we know, Sonic Forces is Sonic Forces. So here's my proposition. Give me Sonic Forces, but it's an open zone game. Give me a war-torn Green Hill Zone completely wrecked Go all the way with it. Don't just drop sand on it. Make the place look like an absolute blazing inferno and make it an open zone with individual stages stationed within it, of course. And then have those overworld boss fights like the ones in Sonic Frontiers be like Dr. Robotnik's different mechs. Make them like the Death Egg Sentinel robot thingies that you see in the background of Sonic Forces but never actually get to fight. And then in these open zones, let us fight against the characters that were teased in the E3 trailer, the majority of which we never actually got to fight. 
Give me that chaos boss fight now, Sega! Classic Sonic, either find a justification for him to be there or ditch him entirely. However, I also just think there's so much more that can be done with the Phantom Ruby. When we're running through the destroyed Green Hill Zone, if this thing is tearing dimensions apart and you do want to justify Classic Sonic, have it so that you can see that parts of Green Hill Zone are starting to pixelate and look like it's 16-bit self. Have this happen to like 3D with like a glitch effect. And if the whole game is just this game that is glitching between being a 16-bit experience and a modern experience, that would be such a cool idea. The idea of taking familiar Sonic locations and a few new ones and making them into war zones. Make them open with individual missions through portals and gates, and have NPCs of the different characters that populate the Resistance, have NPCs of different soldiers, rather than have Sonic get trapped aboard the Death Egg causing Robotnik to win, have it be that Robotnik just went hard this time. It would make him way scarier. The idea that Sonic is the only one standing between Robotnik and world domination is a disservice to the other characters, and it's also kind of a disservice to Robotnik as a threat too. The idea that he just simply cannot stand a chance when Sonic's around. Nah, have it be so that he's got the Phantom Ruby, which will enable him to just make as many Death Egg robots as he needs to just pummel the planet while Sonic is around. It also makes it way more of an uphill battle for Sonic and his friends. Just makes it more tense. And just really maximize the potential of that story. There have been some terrific story rewrites. Sonic Forces rewritten by Chari 5 is incredible. But there's also Let's Fix Infinite by my good buddy Garrulous64, and it really showcases the potential of these characters that was tragically squandered in the real deal. Sonic Forces has the potential to be one of the biggest, most exciting Sonic stories in the history of the franchise, and it is such a bitter pill to swallow that the game came out as it did. It's time to make it right and give us a proper Sonic Forces. In at number two is Sonic Colors, and again, I know what you're thinking, that was just remastered recently, why bother? Because the idea of open zone versions of Eggman's incredible interstellar amusement park is just far too enticing to pass up. The game has one of the greatest art directions in the series. And we see these worlds that look populated with so many things that we could interact with that we never actually get to really interact with. There's so much here in the tropical resort that we never actually get to truly explore for ourselves. And with the open zone format, we could do that. Have it so that we can just waste our time partaking in the different games, shows, and rides that Dr. Robotnik would have put together, like an actual theme park. Then you've got kind of the cyberspace kind of equivalent, and Sega really don't need to do much here. Just take the stages from the existing Sonic Colors and put them in to these open zones through portals, or it could even be attractions. So it's like, oh, I'm gonna go on the Ferris wheel, you then go to the Ferris wheel boss fight. We know that Silver and Blaze were there in the Interstellar Amusement Park in the 3DS version of Sonic Colors. Well, they could have side quests as different NPCs in the open zones. And not every single act has to be mandatory, so we can skip things like that stupid bouncing spring because we've got more to do in the open zones. Make it so that certain level portals only open up once you've done a few odd jobs or fetch quests for Silver, Blaze, and any other NPC that could be around this world. And we could even get a supersonic final boss fight against the Egg Mother Wisp, corrupted by Dr. Eggman. I'd also say like most of the boss fights could probably do with a bit of an overhaul. Just a bit of expansion, you know? Then of course have the cutscenes and the dialogue completely rewritten, work Metal Sonic into the story properly, unlike he was in Sonic Colors Ultimate, and you could have a definitive version of Sonic Colors that realizes the full potential of that game and its stunning art direction. God, just thinking of an open zone aquarium park is so exciting to me. Imagine just pairing the Sonic Frontiers gameplay with Sonic Colors' art style. My God, that would be perfection. Isn't it crazy that I'm saying that the PS5 era game should have the art style of a Wii game? And in at number one as the Sonic game that most deserves to be remade in my opinion is Sonic and the Secret Rings. So the thing with Sonic and the Secret Rings is the proposal of the storybook series was a really interesting idea. Sonic in the World of the Arabian Nights was a really refreshing change of pace. And Sonic and the Secret Rings has all the bones of a brilliant Sonic game. 
The level theming is fantastic across the board. The visuals are excellent for a Wii game, but again, just really good looking overall. Pretty them up a bit with next-gen fidelity, and these could be some of the prettiest looking places in the franchise. But also just the general world building here. I mean, like, there's a level where you're being chased by dinosaurs. Who wouldn't want to see that on next-gen hardware? Or even just the Switch. If you want to, you know, stay true to its roots, make it a Switch exclusive if you have to. But the game has a great story, a great atmosphere, an absolutely stellar soundtrack. One of my favorites in the entire series. Some of the coolest overall level themes. It's just full of brilliant ideas and it is let down by the fact that the gameplay in the video game is ass. And I don't mean a cute pert little bubble butt, no, I mean an unwiped, unclean, gross, hairy, flabby ass. It's disgusting and I hate it. And I've heard people say, try it with the controller support afforded by the dolphin emulator. But it doesn't fix anything because the game just feels awkward. Sonic and a charged jump just don't go together. It really does stink because the game really should be amazing. But it's let down by not only a crap control scheme, but also on top of that motion controls if you're playing it natively on Wii hardware. Give me Sonic and the Secret Rings, but it's a boost game. Or maybe it's got the adventure play style. That doesn't really matter. I can go either or. I think the boost gameplay would probably suit Sonic and the Secret Rings because of how kinetic its level design overall is. You know what I say? Get Sega Hardlight on it. The Sonic Dream Team structure would be really great for Sonic and the Secret Rings. Especially with how it has those little quotas to pad the runtime out. I think Hardlight would do a much better job with that. Rather than stupid crap like don't break the pots, it could be stuff like finding genie lamps in the certain levels. And, you know, Sega Hardlight have proven that they know how to reappropriate level design to accommodate for different gameplay types and overall structures. So, yeah, I say leave it to them. So, guys, those are my top 10 picks for the Sonic games that deserve remakes. What do you guys think? What Sonic games would you like to see get remade? Comment below, discuss. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below is a link to my Patreon page, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can get your name in the credits of these videos. A special shout out goes to the patrons in the $5 and above tiers. They are RT0, Wilmer, Cal X, Richard Rogers, Glad Goku, Dare Denny, SSSO6, Kale Bennett, That Jordo, King K of Warheads has balloons to inflate, but I can't find any helium anywhere. Dazzle Fizzle, Hyper Mecha SP, Surus the Skeptic, Biotin, Oh no, I've used up all the helium, what am I meant to do now? And Vera Wild. Thank you to you good folks so much for your generosity, and to all of you at home, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Now go, leave, or watch another video.